either they find some way to drastically increase revenue and bring more money in so that their profitability isn't negative so that they aren't losing 2% on every single game that they sell or they go under or vastly cut down their employee base, close down multiple studios, go back to releasing maybe one, two games a year. You would start to see a major collapse of one of the largest game development studios on planet Earth. You know, I got this watch band because they said it wouldn't get caught in my arm hair. All the reviews were like, eh, it does a pretty good job. No, I'm going bald on my wrist. It's horrible. I cover a lot of Ubisoft games on this channel, mostly because I'm a huge fan of their titles. I think they're incredibly underrated as a developer, especially in the face of companies like EA, Take-Two Interactive, and even Square Enix. Furthermore, I'm also really interested in the business side of game development, so any chance I have to talk about the intricacies of their company behind closed doors, I'll jump on it. And so the more that I dig into their financial paperwork, the more I see that Ubisoft is dealing with a massive financial problem and 2020 is looking like it really could be the make or break year for Ubisoft as a company. This will be the year that determines whether they shoot up into the stratosphere of gaming companies and become on par with Electronic Arts and Take-Two Interactive, or if they totally blow it and they are permanently relegated to the kids' table and not allowed to mess with the big boys. The reason for this is that Ubisoft has a major problem in terms of their profit margin, something which we'll discuss in just a second. But before we get into all of that nitty gritty, I want to take a second to go back through what set Ubisoft up for this difficult situation they find themselves in. And of course, also thank you to our sponsor for this episode, NordVPN. So 2019 was a very problematic year and time for Ubisoft as a company. As hard as it is to believe, they really didn't do much of anything as a company. Bear in mind, this is a multi-billion dollar video game developer and they didn't really have a single major release and definitely didn't have a single major release that earned them buku bucks. They didn't have an Assassin's Creed title launching. They didn't have any sort of Watch Dogs or spin-off title coming out. All of the games that they released were sequels or tie-ins to previously established franchises, and none of them really dominated the headlines or did particularly well. And of course, when it comes to revenue, you expect to have one giant bomb-ass release right Right before the holidays, Ubisoft didn't have that. It was supposed to be a game called Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which was an utter and complete disaster. The game was buggy, broken, rushed to release, and across the board, an absolute travesty, and everybody knew it. Ubisoft lost a ton of money because of this, not just in the lost revenue and sales they would have gained had the game been good, but also in capital funding from investors or venture capitalists or other people coming in and giving their company money. They looked at Ubisoft and had lost all confidence in their ability to put forward a polished product that consumers wanted to purchase. And this one gigantic screw up made Ubisoft look as though they were utterly incompetent, as though they didn't give a crap. It really was a Bethesda moment for them. And this screw up looks as though it's going to be affecting Ubisoft's image rating with investors for the next three, four, or even five years. Seriously, when I say that Ghost Recon Breakpoint screwed up Ubisoft, I mean it. And Ubisoft management is well aware of this too. I've made previous videos where we looked at comments from the CEO, Yves Guimont, where he outright said, yeah, it was a major screw up and we are taking steps to rectify that mistake, which is why they delayed pretty much everything they had coming in late 2019 and early 2020 into late 2020 and early 2021 to make sure that it was polished, refined, and that they weren't going to have the same issue. In effect, Ubisoft has taken all of the steps that you could reasonably expect them to take in response to a major screw up like Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I know we can all say, well, they shouldn't have done it in the first place. And of course I agree, but it doesn't change the fact that Ubisoft did screw up and now they're trying to correct that mistake. I don't know why I have this armrest up. I don't, 
there. <laughs> so how does all of this affect Ubisoft in 2020? Right now, what does it mean for them? Well, it means trouble. There's a website known as Seeking Alpha. Basically, they coagulate a bunch of different financial news on different companies. You can track different companies and their competitors to get news on when they're trading above or below their normal range, how they're doing, quarterly income earnings and reports and everything. It's pretty cool. I recommend you check it out. But point is, they actually have analysts that go through, analyze and break down the financial health and viability of a company at any given time. And their latest post on Ubisoft was nothing short of scathing. To quote them directly, I will have the article linked below. They said, quote, we don't believe in the management of Ubisoft's ability to improve the situation in fiscal year 2020 to 2021 this year due to the intensified competition, small margin and poor performance in the past. We don't think Ubisoft is worthy of investment right now, and we believe that the market offers greater opportunities with less risk, effectively giving Ubisoft the rating of stay the hell away. Now, the question, of course, is whether or not this is a fair evaluation to levy at Ubisoft, and that's what we're going to talk about in just a second. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the groundbreaking internet protection service. I highly recommend them and I use them every single day of my life. They have some of the fastest servers on the market, literally the fastest that I've ever encountered in all of my experiments with different VPN services. And my personal favorite bit is that they have some of the best prices on the market for any service like this for viewers of this channel. To check it out, all you have to do is head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens and use promo code Luke Stevens at checkout. You'll get 70% off of a three-year plan and they'll even throw in a free month just because. As you guys know, I have an ethics statement on my website. I don't promote a product unless I use it every single day of my life and NordVPN is one of those services. I do use it day in, day out and I cannot recommend them enough, truly. Again, links in the description. Head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens, promo code Luke Stevens at checkout. So when it comes to Ubisoft in 2020, the major metric in question when it comes to investors looking at their firm has to be the profitability of each of their subsequent releases. Because right now, every time Ubisoft has released something for the last year or so, it's resulted in losses. And this chart from Seeking Alpha does a great job of explaining exactly what we're dealing with. If you look at it right here, it says that Electronic Arts, Activision Blizzard, Take-Two Interactive, and even Nintendo all express numbers that are fairly healthy, especially Electronic Arts. Their net margin is upwards of 50% plus. The average net margin in the industry is 26.4% and the median is 20.63%. Ubisoft, however, is all the way down at the bottom of the list at minus 2.24%. Now, I don't think you need to be a genius to understand why that is bad and why investors look at that and don't want to give you money because if they do, chances are you'll lose it every time you sell a product. And this is a real hole that Ubisoft has to dig themselves out of because because those types of margins don't just happen. They're results of consistent decisions. Not to mention a lot of the reason that Ubisoft's margins are so low and even dipping into the negative is because of how they handle their employees and how they establish their development studios across the planet. They happen to have one of the highest paying median salaries of any game developer in the market. Seriously, if you get out of art school and you want to go work in game development, Ubisoft is one of the highest paying available. They treat their employees very well, but that lowers the net margin that they're dealing with. But that's okay, everybody loves happy and healthy employees. We can forgive that and get over it. What you can't easily get over is the fact that Ubisoft happens to have established many of their game development studios in some of the most expensive places to live on planet Earth. They have development studios in Montreal, in Paris, San Francisco, literally name an expensive place to live, Ubisoft probably has a massive development studio there. What that means is that the rent for your offices is extremely high. 
that lowers your net margin. Then you also add into the fact that residential living is extremely high in those areas as well because they're expensive to live in. That means if you want your employees to move there and work for you, you have to pay them even more than you would compared to employees working out of Austin, Texas, for instance. Then you factor in the excessive taxation that usually occurs in those cities. That means that you're also paying more out in property taxes and everything else across the board it increases the cost of your development process. What you end up with is a company that has extremely low margins before you even try to sell the product to the public. And then you have one major screw up like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and you are suddenly looking at a net margin that's negative. And when I say that Ubisoft can't just flip this around, they can't magically become profitable again, it's because of the nature of their development process. Like I said, you can't just move a development studio with 5,000 employees like they have in Montreal. You can't just move that to a cheaper area. You built it up, the talent is there, the talent lives there, that's what you're dealing with. So really the only way that you can increase your profitability is that you either vastly increase your sales, which is something you can try to do with just a really awesome game, but let's be honest, even awesome games sometimes don't sell particularly well, or you find other ways to increase your profitability, your revenue, bring more money in. That's where microtransactions come in. That's where DLC comes in. That's where greed tends to start to creep into the budgeting of all of these titles. And this is the difficult thing about game development is we're all frustrated by microtransactions, but we need to be adults about this and look at it reasonably because realistically Ubisoft doesn't want to cram their games full of microtransactions, but they're facing a choice. Either they find some way to drastically increase revenue and bring more money in so that their profitability isn't negative so that they aren't losing 2% on every single game that they sell or they go under or vastly cut down their employee base, close down multiple studios, go back to releasing maybe one, two games a year. You would start to see a major collapse of one of the largest game development studios on planet Earth. I don't want to see that happen. So while I don't like microtransactions, I understand that they're a necessary evil to keep this company that I happen to love afloat. I think the point is that we all simply are asking that monetization of these types of products are done in an ethical consumer friendly way. That usually means cosmetic only, something that's not going to drastically affect the gameplay, something that isn't going to affect the integrity of the experience that you're trying to sell. After all, most gamers are not upset when a company has DLC or an expansion, they're usually upset when the monetized products are very lazily done or are cheaply done. Something like Time Savers, which is something that, we, that I think we've all criticized in Ubisoft titles, where they offer two times the XP for like $3 or whatever it is. Or when they start to offer gameplay affecting changes to the loop of gameplay, for a few bucks here and a few bucks there. That's the stuff that's lazy, that's slimy, and that's greedy. But when you do it smart, when you do it intelligently and reasonably in a way that's respectful to your consumer, I think everybody's okay with that. But let me know your thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. I will be reading through all of them. This is an interesting time for Ubisoft, an interesting time for the game development industry, and I'm very interested in hearing everything that you have to say about it as well. Thank you for watching. If you wanna see my upcoming critique of the Witcher Netflix series, make sure to subscribe. It'll be coming out relatively soon. I have some kinks with copyright stuff that I have to sort out. And if you want to support content like this or content like that, head over to Patreon, check it out. Even a dollar gives you early access to a ton of separate videos, exclusive content, stickers, merchandise, all that fun stuff. Thank you for watching, honestly and truly. I love you all more than you could possibly know, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.